Nancy DeMoss Walgamuth encourages us to practice what we preach when it comes to how we treat others. It's not enough to just say that we love each other. We have to show that we love each other. And one of the most practical ways that we can show that we love each other is by opening our homes. This is the Revive Our Hearts podcast with Nancy DeMoss Walgamuth, co-author of True Woman 201. For April 10th, 2024, I'm Dana Gresh. All this month on Revive Our Hearts, we're focusing on the biblical concept of hospitality, showing love to strangers. Nancy DeMoss Walgamuth has been helping us get down to the heart level to show us that gospel-centered hospitality goes way beyond Did I vacuum before the dinner guest showed up? Here's Nancy. To be a Christian is not just to have our own personal relationship with God. To be a Christian is to be a part of a family. It's to be a child of God, and it's to be in relationship with other children of God. You see, as Christians, we share, you and I share, the life of Jesus Christ by spiritual birth. It's a bloodline that we have through Jesus Christ. And that's why the scripture says that we are brothers and sisters in Christ. For the New Testament believers, that was a powerful concept, that they had come out of all kinds of backgrounds, slaves, free, Jews, Gentiles, men, women, but they had come to be related to each other, brothers and sisters in the family of God. And so for those first Christians who were living in a pagan, hostile world, that rejected Christ, this family was very important to them. Those first Christians were a closely knit group of brothers and sisters. They stuck together. They had to. Their survival depended upon it. So as you read through the New Testament, you read about these family relationships. They would greet one another with a holy kiss. There was a sense of when they saw each other, that they, that they loved each other, that they were drawn to each other. They shared the material possessions. They met in homes. They ate meals together. They cared for each other's widows. They showed hospitality to each other because they were a family. They loved each other. And they realized that hospitality is an evidence and an expression of genuine love. We're talking this week about the ministry of hospitality. I want us to see today that this is one of the most important evidences of genuine love in the body of Christ. The ministry of hospitality is one of the key factors that explains how Christianity was able to expand and advance so rapidly into the New Testament first century world. It was because of the love that Christians showed for each other. And the way they showed that love was through hospitality. When the pagans looked at the Christians, they were forced to acknowledge, see how they love one another. They welcome each other. They eat together. Even people who are in different socioeconomic levels, they eat together. They come into each other's homes. They love each other. They're ready to die for each other. And how did they show that love? And how do we show the love of Christ in our world in practical, down-to-earth terms? I mean, it's one thing to sit in church and talk about, oh, how we love each other. But how do we show that we love each other? Well, I want to suggest to you, based on the New Testament scriptures, that hospitality is one of the most practical, concrete expressions of true Christian love. In fact, the New Testament exhortations in relation to hospitality are almost always found in the context of talking about brotherly love. Let me show you how that is true. In Hebrews chapter 13, the first verse says, Let brotherly love continue. And by the way, the writer to Hebrews was talking to people who'd been persecuted for their faith, and he was telling them how to make it in a hostile world. And one of the keys is to love each other. He said, let let brotherly love continue. Do not forget to entertain strangers. Show love to strangers. There's love, and how is it expressed? In hospitality. 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 8. Above all things, have fervent love for one another. And again, he's in a a book where he's talking a lot about suffering. How do you survive in a hard world that beats you up? How do you survive in a world where there are difficult relationships? He says, love each other. And how do we express that love? Very next verse. Be hospitable to one another. 
without grumbling. Love each other. How do you see it? In hospitality. You see the same concept here in Romans chapter 12. Paul says, be kindly affectionate to one another with brotherly love. And then he goes on to say, how do we express that? Pursuing hospitality. Pursuing hospitality. It's not enough to just say that we love each other. We have to show that we love each other. And one of the most practical ways that we can show that we love each other is by opening our homes, by expressing Christian hospitality to one another. We said yesterday that the book of 3 John, the little epistle there written by the Apostle John, the third epistle of John is a book on hospitality. And he talks about a man named Gaius who extended hospitality to itinerant preachers, to itinerant evangelists who were spreading the gospel. And this is how the gospel spread in those early days and still in many parts of the world. There are those who would travel from city to city or place to place preaching the gospel. And they didn't have hotels to stay in. They didn't have restaurants to eat in. So people opened their homes. The believers opened their homes to these traveling uh, messengers of the gospel. And Gaius was a man who extended hospitality to these servants of the Lord. When John talks about this man and his hospitality, he says, I've heard about your hospitality. It's been reported to the church. And he describes Gaius' hospitality as your love. You have shown your love for the brethren in the way that you open your home to needy people. So the, the commands to be hospitable often come within a context of talking about love. This is an evidence of genuine love. Alexander Strzok has written a helpful little book called The Commands of Hospitality. He says, Hospitality fleshes out love in a uniquely personal and sacrificial way. Through the ministry of hospitality, we share our most prized possessions. We share our family, our home, finances, food, privacy, and time. Indeed, we share our very lives. He goes on to say, unless we open the doors of our homes to one another, the reality of the local church as a close-knit family of loving brothers and sisters is only a theory. A cold, unfriendly church, he says, contradicts the gospel message. Now, I don't know about you, but I've heard people say over the years, I don't like going back to that church or that church because they're so unfriendly. I hope that couldn't be said of your church. I hope that would not be said of us as believers. What people need to say when they see us is they open themselves. They give themselves. This is a way of life for them, opening their hearts and their homes. And Strzok says in this book that a cold, unfriendly church or a cold, unfriendly group of believers is a contradiction to the message of the gospel. I think of people over the years who've sacrificed to express the love of Christ to me, who've shown me the heart and the love of Christ through their hospitality. I think about the time when I was 17 years old and moved from the East Coast out to the West Coast to start my junior year of college. I was 17 years old, and I was going to a secular uh, university for the first time, and there was a family who had five children of their own, but their children were all grown, they opened their home to me. They, the man was a friend of my dad's. They were business associates. And they said, we want you to come and live in our home. Now, this was a couple who had already done their child raising thing. Their kids were out of college and out of the home. But they opened their home to me for two years. They listened to me practice the piano. I was a piano major. They put up with my coming and going at all kinds of odd hours and my friends coming and going. And they could have just been enjoying their close to retirement years and settling in and just enjoying themselves. But they said to me, as they did to numerous others over the years, and now they are in their late 80s and still extending hospitality. They expressed the love of Christ in a tangible way. They said, come into our home, live with us. They took me in as one of their own. I think about a time a few years earlier when I was in high school. And there were times during my high school years when I was wrestling with questions about my faith, wrestling to understand how the scripture could all really be true, and wrestling at times with relationships and the living out of my Christian faith in my own home and in other relationships. And I remember a couple named Phil and Liz DeVries. 
Phil was the uh, music director in our Christian school, and I was involved in accompanying the choir and involved in a lot of the aspects that he led. And he and his wife just took a personal interest, as many coaches do in some of their uh, young people. But as the music director and his wife, they took an interest in me. And I can't count how many times they had me into their home. We would sit around at their kitchen table or in their living room and just talk. And they did probably more listening than talking, as I think back on it. Um, But their home became a refuge. It was a place where they showed me true love. They lived out the gospel in their home. They took, I don't know how many high school students in those days into their home and said, let us love you. Let us demonstrate the gospel to you. They didn't just sit me down in a classroom and say, okay, here's a lesson in apologetics. This is how you know the Bible is true. They said, let us show you the love of Christ. And you know, when I got out of that home after those years in high school, those times of visiting in that home, I had no doubt that the gospel was true because I had seen it lived out in the home of Phil and Liz DeVries. Now, they had children of their own, and I'm sure they had to make sacrifices to have these teenage kids hanging around their home, but they did. And it was interesting to see them and to meet one of their children now grown, and for her to say what a blessing it was for her as a child growing up in that home, to see the love of Christ demonstrated in the way that her parents opened their home to others. As we think about how hospitality expresses the love of Christ. I wonder how many empty beds do you suppose there are in the homes of believers on any given night? In your church? In your house? When's the last time you invited a stranger into your home? Said to someone at the end of church, would you like to come home with us for lunch? We've got a place for you to stay. Someone who's just moved into town. Come stay with us. Here's the question the Lord has been challenging me with. If my love were measured by my hospitality, how big would my love be? If your love were measured by the extent of your hospitality, what would be the measure of your love? You see, Christian hospitality is an evidence of Christian love. That's why it's not an option. We've got to open our hearts and our homes if we're going to show the love of Christ. Father, you have shown your love to us by opening your heart and your home to us. And now you call us in this hostile, pagan world that is so broken and so wounded to show your love. Thank you for those who have shown love to us and have opened their hearts and their homes to us and ministered your grace to us. And I pray that you would show us how to show your love to others as we open our homes and we extend hospitality for Jesus' sake, that others may know how much he loves them. I pray in Jesus' name, amen. Wow. I'm going to repeat the question just asked by Nancy DeMoss Walgamuth. If my love were measured by my hospitality, how big... Would my love be? Let's all be asking the Lord to help our love grow. Here at Revive Our Hearts, we'd like to help you in that process. Our team has written a brand new six-week Bible study based on this teaching from Nancy. It's called Your Welcome Here. We'd love to send you a copy when you support the ministry of Revive Our Hearts with a gift of any size. Just visit reviveourhearts.com or call 1-800-569-5959. And to go along with the Bible study, we filmed a six-part video series. In this series, Erin Davis travels and visits women in various seasons of life, women who are modeling loving hospitality in the body of Christ. One of the women Erin visits in this video is a busy mom and pastor's wife named Hannah Galvin. She has a passion for showing love in the body of Christ through hospitality. Here is Erin to help us get to know Hannah. So how long has your husband been serving at your church? We started helping out with the youth group eight years ago. Okay. Yep, just after we moved to the area. Okay, and he's on staff at your church? He is now, yeah. Yeah, Mm -hmm. what's his role? So he's the assistant pastor. He works with the youth group, so he's in charge of the youth group. He oversees small groups. 
Okay, he's in charge of the Upwards basketball program. It just job. wrapped up last yeah. weekend. So, how'd you guys shift, or maybe you didn't shift, from focusing on the youth group to opening your home to young adults? So, uh, we've been working with youth group for quite a while, and for a couple of years, we were like wondering and talking about like if we should start also like a small group for the young adults at our home because mm. no one was really intentionally pouring into them that we could see and uh, so at that point we'd known some of these graduating seniors for like five or six years right. and so known them since middle school so it seemed a natural progression to take it one step further and invite them over and so at that point he was hired full-time but we were going to start it whether he was hired full-time or not because sure. that was just working in our hearts yeah to do that but we were also hosting a small group for other adults at our home too so did so, you decide to focus on just that young adult yeah. group yeah, we did, which was hard because some of those other adults we'd been with for a long time. Mm. So that was sad and it's still sad because yeah. you can't connect in the same way when you're not getting together. For family. sure. But yes, but it was healthier for our family balance to just have the one. Yeah. So one night a week, you host young adult small group at your house. Give me, what's that like? What do you do? What do you not do? Yeah, so it starts at seven. So that way our kids can say hi and mingle with the young adults and then they go to bed to read for a little while because their normal bedtime is like 7 30 or 8. okay so we'll have some kind of snack some weeks it's something homemade some weeks it's whatever is in the cupboard that works mm. <laughs> and some weeks it's josh pick up something on your way home yeah uh, just depending on my preparation for the week i really like making muffins because it's easy and i know it's going to turn out all right and, and it's filling it is it's yeah. filling yeah. and you can make like you can add variety to it easily. Mm -hmm. So a few weeks ago I'd made banana muffins and half of them had chocolate chips, half of them had blueberries. And some weeks it's funny, some weeks they'll devour whatever I put in front of them and other weeks it's like no one was hungry tonight and that's totally fine. Yeah. But this week, like I thought for sure there'd be some left over the next day for the kids to have. Cause they always ask like, can I have a like, nope, this is for small group. Yeah. And if there's extra, you can have it. Sometimes I'll set aside a portion for them. But I didn't, and by the end of the night, the muffins were gone, and <laughs> one of the young men were <laughs> leaving the house, and he was like, thanks for the muffins, and I'm like, I had six of them. <laughs> like, All right. That's a lot That's of a muffins. Lot of <laughs> was he on Team Blueberry or Team Chocolate Chip? I didn't Did he ask. Tell you? I don't know. I'd be curious. I don't know. I'd have to ask him, but he also had, like, six cookies last night, <laughs> so he loves... He loves the snacks, so. I actually remember that about my young adult years. You probably do too, you're still a young adult, but like that college age, like homemade food mm -hmm. is a real blessing. It even is. if it's just banana muffins. Yep, they enjoy it. And they definitely eat the homemade stuff better than like store-bought stuff. Yeah. So they enjoy that. So I try to, try to do the homemade. And then we vary between like sermon-based study, just discussion questions on the last week's sermon or we'll go through Right Now Media series and yeah. do a video. And then we'll split up into prayer, guys and girls, and we'll pray with those separate groups. And then sometimes we'll do a game at the end. That's been lately, like they'll stick around and we'll play games for a while, just hang out. Sometimes we just talk and And your laugh. kids are usually in bed by that point. Yes, by that point, typically they're sleeping. Yeah. And so then they're really good sleepers. So then it doesn't matter how loud we are. Right. And we just have a good time. Getting to pray together, I think is the most meaningful time mm. at the end of our discussion because mm. hearing what's on their hearts, they you know the struggles and the victories and yeah. getting to be consistent with those. Yeah. That time is sweet, at least with our girls. Just pray for each other and yeah. follow up and yeah. Okay. So And you homeschool your kids? Mm -hmm. You how does that impact your ability to use your home for ministry? Oh it's awesome because yeah. we're so flexible. Yeah. So as they're getting older it's a little more challenging because they have more stuff that I'd like to get done every day. Mm -hmm. But especially before this year, like we can do our school in the afternoon if that's the only time someone else is free in the morning to come over mm -hmm. and get together with other people nice to be able to get together with other homeschool families because there's yeah, a lot of flexibility. It's like, no, we have nowhere to be so we can have time to have people over. And Yeah, my kids are a little bit older than yours, but still have a little and have been in the, I mean, definitely in the everybody at home years. And just feel like there's a lot of ladies at my church and in my Christian circles that the kids are the reason why they feel like they can't show hospitality. For any number of reasons. Sometimes I think they just feel like I'm at, I'm at max. And the yeah. thought of adding anyone or anything into the mix is too much for me, which 
I get on some level, but what would you say to that mom? How would you reconcile the demands of motherhood, which are real and daily, mm -hmm. and what you see in scripture, and I do too, as the command to be hospitable? I think that if you're not hospitable or not making time to get together with other believers, even if it's in someone else's home and you bring your kids with you, you miss out on a lot of blessings yeah. from that. Like there's a lot of blessings from making the time for that, connecting with other people. Mm -hmm. Like part of the reason it's so important for me is like all the one another's in scripture. You know, you should pray for each other. You should exhort each other, encourage and bear one help another's bear, burdens. Yep, That's where you were going. That was. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, bear one another's burdens. You know, you can't do that if you don't know people. Right. And you can't get to know someone at adequately 10 minutes before church and, right. you know, staying even staying after, you know, you can get to know people, but not to the same depth to like, what are you struggling with and how can I pray for you? Mm -hmm. And oh, I see this in your life and how can we grow, you know, that area together? For our kids, the relationships they've built with some of our young adults, they're loved on by these great young adults. Yeah. And then for the young adults too, like they get the opportunity to think of someone other than themselves yes. as little where they're not, you know, gaining, you know, status or whatever right. by it, but they get those blessings and they truly love our kids. Yeah. Like they snuggle together. They come running when they come in the door to show them cat videos. And yeah, they just loved. So there's a lot like of the blessings church from could that. be kind of one of the last intergenerational holdouts in our society. Everything else is very mm -hmm. segmented very by true. phase and mm -hmm. um, the church, you know, Paul's description of us as being one body of many parts or a family, that mm. gets lived out in really practical ways. It does. So yeah. I, I'm amening everything you're saying. I didn't know that stat about people leaving the church, but it makes so much mm. sense. Yeah. Yeah, so those relationships are important. Like in Titus, it talks about the older pour into the younger, and you yeah. should always have someone older pouring into you, and you should always be pouring into someone mm -hmm. younger than yourself. Like, there's a reason why that makes for a strong body of Christ. Yeah. That is important. Yeah. Yeah, I think another layer of it is there's a real temptation to build kid centric families, mm -hmm. and our kids are important. They're mm -hmm. blessings. We, of ah, course, want yeah. to treasure them, but I have been watching my kids. Like, that's actually really bad for their soul, for me to make them the axis that I orbit around. Oh, so yeah. part of the value of hospitality in my home is that they learn to live for others. And mm -hmm. they learn to have people over when they don't feel good. Have you seen yeah. your kids have to, like, here, I, I wanted to pick your mom brain on this. We've had some, some toys get broken because yeah. other kids come and play or... Their rooms are a little messy, and I just had them clean so that people could come over, and that is hard for them. So how do you navigate yep. some of those challenges? Yeah, so a lot of those is like our toys are to share, so yeah. they get lots of practice sharing. So that's not normally too big of a deal unless it's something new. Or then our problem hard. is Lego sets. Like uh, if it's been a build, yes. we try to put them up mm -hmm. high. Yes. Uh, we try to set ourselves up for success, but yes. we, we do this. some broken sets. Mm -hmm. yes. Yep, we do similarly. Try to set them up for like, all right, like you know you have this new thing you really don't want your younger cousin to play with. Where's sure. a safe place you can put it? Yep. So then it's not even visible and it's not an issue. Because mm -hmm. it's way harder if it's out in the open and then you have to go over like, oh, actually you can't play with that. And then everyone's upset yep. and that's harder. So yep. yeah, try to plan in advance for it. But they're really, they love to share their things with people and because they're used to it. Yeah, so. that's a learned behavior. Yes. yes, and they have lots the of The sinner in them doesn't love to share. So <laughs> no. they've had to learn that well, sacrifice. they have to learn just being siblings. Like yeah. we are very much a communal toy family there. Like yeah. as they're getting older, there are more things like, okay, this is yours and you don't have to let your two-year-old sister or play with it because she grew in it like sure understand that difference but there aren't like this is my barbie this is your barbie mm -hmm. like these are our barbies and yeah. we're all going to share them together not that yeah. it always goes smoothly sure but there's yeah. beauty in that for sure yes yep what are some ways you keep your heart prepared to continue to show hospitality because i'm thinking of where scripture tells us not to be weary in well-doing and sometimes we can start out even as young marrieds, eager to have our first house, excited to have people over. But then you're talking about a weekly cycle. How do you prepare your heart to continue to show hospitality? I think like your own spiritual growth is always important. Mm -hmm. And if you're not learning and growing, then you're going to have a hard time obeying God in different areas of your life. Mm -hmm. So like when I'm not consistent in my devotions and prayer life, then I know I see that effect in other areas of my life. I'm like, I don't want to do this. But it helps me to think of like the bigger picture. 
like what's the real reason why we have people over mm. so that we can build into them and disciple and to help them grow closer to God. And sometimes you do that when you're tired mm -hmm. and sometimes you're super excited about it and sometimes you're not, but yeah. still being faithful even when you don't feel like it. So one time, one of our young adults had just had a rough day and I think I was out running errands and so I told her like, well, I'm not home, but you can come on over and I'll be there soon and we can talk about it mm -hmm. and and she did. So she came over and I got there, you know, shortly after she did and mm -hmm. just talked about what was going on and was glad that she was able just to come and talk through it and, and she understands our kids are running around and yeah. doing stuff and interrupting but being able to talk and just work through pray together what's going on mm. and, yeah. I think a lot of people would see that as an interruption oh yeah <laughs> like being a Christian is an interruption to your life yeah. <laughs> but, yeah but you have to God has those moments for you so are you going to say yes to God or no to God mm. I don't want to say no <laughs> yeah. I want our home to be a reflection of heaven to my guests. That sounds kind of strange putting mm. it like that, but like, you know, if you're hungry, you'll be fed. You have that peace thing. A book I read put it like, you know, having your toys put away and organized is that peace. You know, that peace of God is shown in the peace of putting away things, that mm. organization and being loved and cared for is an example of the love God has mm -hmm. for us. And if I can give them a little glimpse of that, like God's love for us is so much greater than mm -hmm. anything I could show and how he meets our needs. And maybe that's partly why I want them to never leave hungry is because like, I never want to like leave God's presence hungry. He wouldn't let me leave hungry. Yeah. So I don't want them to leave hungry and want them to just feel loved in those little things because God provides for us in mm. those little things yeah. Um, yeah. that are important. Like he knows our needs and our wants and if I can pass that along to the people that come into our home, then I want them to see a glimpse of like, our Heavenly Father does so much more than that. Beautiful. I mean, but. when Jesus ascended, he told us he was going to prepare a place. Mm -hmm. And then when it was time, he would welcome us to that place. And yeah. it'll be a million times more than what you or I could ever do in our homes. Mm -hmm. But I've often said, I want people to come into my house and they don't have to audibly do it, but I want something inside of them to go, <sighs> That's better. And that's what heaven's going to be like times a million. Mm -hmm. I mean, we're going to be like, all striving has ceased. Mm -hmm. All grief is over. All tears are gone. All hunger is fed. You know, yeah. all sickness is gone. All death is dead. Yeah. Huh. That's better. And so we yeah. can, we can, we can be a glimpse of that. Yeah. I think. Yeah, I agree. Hopefully leave a little lighter than they came. Yeah. Like to help carry those burdens and yeah. encourage each other and whatever they're going through and, and leave happier off than they came in. That's Aaron Davis talking with Hannah Galvin about what hospitality can look like in a local church. Hannah is part of a video series hosted by Aaron Davis. It's an amazing look at the lives of several women who are living out gospel-centered hospitality, and Hannah is one of them. You can watch the videos as they're released at reviveourhearts.com slash hospitality. Also, we took the principles from Nancy's teaching in this series and turned them into a Bible study called You're Welcome Here. Through this six-week study, you'll see that God's kind of hospitality is not really an event as much as a lifestyle. We're hoping you'll go through this study over coffee or tea with a group of friends. Again, the title is You're Welcome Here, and you'll find more information when you visit reviveourhearts.com. We'll send you your own copy of the study in gratitude for your donation of any size to the ministry of Revive Our Hearts. We're listener supported. That means we depend on the faithful giving of friends like you. Again, you can give at reviveourhearts.com. Select the word donate and you'll be able to request your gift there. If you'd rather call, here's our number, 1-800-569-5959. Now hospitality looks different from person to person. Tomorrow we'll look at what it looks like in the life of a sweet sister in an urban context. Please be back for Revive Our Hearts. This program is a listener-supported production of Revive Our Hearts in Niles, Michigan, calling women to freedom, fullness, and fruitfulness in Christ.